subordinate court. Now, appointment of district judges is made under Article 233. Now, appointment to district judge is made by the governor in consultation with the High Court of the concerned state. Now, the criteria is that they must have at least seven years as an advocate to be recommended by the High Court. Also, the recruitment pers recruitment of persons other than district judges to the judicial service. So, judicial service can also appoint the district judges under Article 234. Now, appointment of persons other than district judge shall be made by governor for sub-judicial services. Now, accordance to the rules made by governor in consultation with the State Public Service Commission and the High Court concerned. Moving on to tribunals. Now, tribunals were not a part of the original constitutions. They were incorporated into the Indian Constitution by the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976 in accordance with the recommendations of the Swaran Singh Committee. Now, the amendments involved introduced Part 14A to the Constitution. This part is called Tribunals. Now, it contains two articles. The first article is 323A, which is Administrative Tribunals and Article 323B, which is Tribunals for Other Subjects. Now, under Article 323A, that is Administrative Tribunals, Administrative Tribunals are quasi-judicial institutions that resolve disputes related to recruitment and service conditions of persons engaged in public service. Now, the Central Administrative Tribunal was created under this section. They are of statutory origin and so they must be created by a statute of the parliament or legislature. Now they function on the principle of natural justice and they are not bound by the civil procedure code. Also they have the power to summon witnesses, administer oath and compel the submission of documents like any other court. The writs of prohibition and certiorari are available against the decisions of these tribunals. They are independent bodies and they are not subject to administrative interference. Now in Chandra Kumar's case of 1997, the Supreme Court had held that appeals against the order of a tribunal could be made in High Court. This defeats the purpose of reducing the burden of normal courts. Now the Administrative Tribunals Act of 1985 provides for three types of tribunals. Now the three types are central government establishes an administrative tribunal called central administrative tribunal. The central government may upon receipt of a re request in this behalf from any state government establish an administrative tribunal for state employees. Also two or more states might ask for a joint tribunal which is called a Joint Administrative Tribunal JAT now which it exercises powers of administrative tribunal for these states which have requested for the creation of a joint tribunal. Now article 323b provides for tribunals for other subjects such as taxation, industrial and labor laws, foreign exchange, import export, land reforms, food etc, ceilings on urban property elections to parliament and state legislature, rent and tenancy rights. Now tribunals under 2323A can be established only by the parliament. However, uh, tribunals under 323B can be established by both parliament and state legislatures. Now under article 323A, there can be only one tribunal at the center and one for each state or two or more for for two or more states but under article 323b there can be hierarchy of a tribunals now national green tribunal the national green tribunal was established in 2010 under the ngt act of 2010 so it is a statutory body for effective and expeditious disposal of cases relating to environmental protection and conservation of forests and other natural resources now the tribunal is mandated to make an endeavor for disposal of applications or appeals finally within six months of filing the same. Now initially NGT is proposed to be set up at five places of settings and will follow circuit procedure for making itself more accessible. Now New Delhi is the principal place of setting of the tribunal and Bhopal, Pune, Kolkata, Chennai shall be other four places of setting of the tribunal. Now moving on to Grand Nyayalayas. 
Now, Gram Nyayale or village courts are established under the Gram Nyayale Act of 2008 for speedy and easy access to justice system in rural areas of India. The Gram Nyayale Gram Nal. Nyayales are presided over by a Nyaya Adhikari who will have the same power, enjoy the same salary and benefits of a judicial magistrate of first class. Now, such Nyaya Adhikaris are to be appointed by the state government in consultation with respective high courts. Now, the jurisdiction of Gram Nyayales have an area specified by a notification of the state government in consultation with the respective high courts. they can function as a mobile court as well at any place within the within the jurisdiction of such gram nyayales after giving wide publicity to that regard now they both they have both civil and criminal jurisdiction over offences the preliminary jurisdiction of nyayale is fixed by the respective high courts now gram nyayales have been given the power to accept certain evidences which would otherwise be not acceptable under the indian evidence act now procedure to be followed is they follow special procedures in civil matters in a manner it deems just and reasonable in the interest of justice they also allow for conciliation of dispute and settlements of the same in the first instance now appeal in criminal cases shall lie to the court of session that is session court which shall be heard and disposed of within a period of 6 months from the date of filing of such appeal and for criminal cases the appeal shall lie with the district court which shall be heard and disposed of within a period of 6 months from the filing of the appeal that'll be it